The grade 6 unsolved problem was chosen at the conference, but subsequently the Heilbronn triangle problem was thought to be better uh, introduced at a higher grade level. So that leaves the grade 6 open for your input. Here are some options. The first one is by John Conway. You notice this is the Fibonacci sequence, but what he did is he decided that whenever you came up with a composite number, you should divide it by its smallest prime factor. So the first composite number we hit is 8, and that means that instead of being 8, we have to divide that by 2, so we end up with only 4. And the next, that would be 5 plus 4 is 9, and 9 is also composite, that's 3 times 3, divided by its smallest composite number, so that's 3, and we end up with 3. So we can keep on going with this sequence, and some people, uh, Richard Guy, think that there are going to be an infinite number of loops. So you can start off, you don't have to start off with two ones, you could start off with any two numbers. And Richard Guy thinks that there's going to be an infinite number of uh, the loops that are created. And John Conway disagrees. He thinks that there are going to be a finite number created. So this was an informal bet between the two of them uh, that remains unsolved. A variant of John Conway's killer bunny sequence is to choose any three numbers to begin with, and subsequent turns you add up the last three numbers and you divide by the smallest prime factor. So if the number en ends up to be prime, well then you end up dividing by itself and you end up with one. So let's see how this sequence goes forward. This game is a great way to give your students practice in prime and composite numbers. You split the class into two groups, red and blue. The red team always goes first, and they get to choose a composite number. So here they've chosen eight. Now the blue team gets to choose a prime number. They're choosing two. And the red team gets to choose a prime number. They choose seven. And then the blue team wins if they can choose a composite number so that the, their product is equal to the product that the red team has produced. Otherwise, the red team wins. So in this case, the blue team chooses 28 and wins. An idea that I didn't put in the conference booklet, but probably should have, is integral fission. This is an improvement from the standard prime factorization tree that you're all used to. And it's an improvement because it just adds a few rules, but those rules add so much beauty and complexity that they have to be there, and it's definitely better. So he here's, uh, here's how it works. So we want to find the prime factorization of 30. Now normally you could choose 2 and 15, or you could choose 3 and 10, but you notice that all of these are not weighted nicely. Uh, so we want to find the most equal weighting every time that we split a number. So in this case, of course, it's 5 and 6. That's the most equal weighting. That's the first rule. It has to be as equal as possible. The second rule is that always the bigger goes on the right. So here the 6 is bigger, so it goes on the right. And we keep on going. So this is the unique integral fission of 30, as opposed to um, prime factorization trees where you have a whole bunch. Now, just by having a unique one, we end up being able to ask a whole bunch of really interesting problems, some of which are going to be unsolved, I guarantee. So, uh, I want to have the first two consecutive integers that have this pattern. Go ahead, try to solve it. The answer is 116 and 117. Isn't that beautiful?